Hello everyone, welcome to this CUBE special presentation of the Google Cloud's Marvel series. I'm John Furrier, host of the CUBE here in our Palo Alto studio. The Google Cloud Marvel series is where we feature the best innovators. Here with me is Steven Orban, VP of Migrations, ISVs of, and Marketplace at Google Cloud, and, and Manish Ketchapal, who is the VP of Google Cloud Engagement Palo Alto Networks. Gentlemen, thanks for joining the Marvel series. Steven, good to see you again. Manish, thanks for coming on. Very nice meeting you, John. And John, always a pleasure, thanks for having me. How do you guys think about the marketplace? Because again, as the, your customer base changes their consumption, uh, cloud obviously is a big power, power play for you guys. And how have you grown your business? How's this change your go to market? How, how do, have you, what is the secret for being a marvel? Thank you, first of all, Steven. Thank you for giving us this opportunity, John, hosting the show, I appreciate it. Uh, uh, so I'll take a little bit of step back before I answer the specific question. Uh, is, we have a strong strategic relationship 2018 onwards. We started building a lot of our solutions on Google Cloud. And building solutions meant a lot of co-engineering work, actually shaping some of the Google products as we started consuming in scale. And I would, I would argue we are among the top five consumers of some of their core technologies that they've built and we had created successful products around them. And what we have simply focused on is to meet the customers where they are. Ultimately, the customers need to consume cloud services. They're transforming their business. They need to secure their transformation and Palo Alto being a leader in platform, security platforms helps to provide that capability. And that's really been the fundamental conversation. So as we started that in, uh, relationship in 2019, 2020, we got our first set of products that we, we had on Google Marketplace. Uh, which was probably a few million dollars of business we did at that time. And accelerating that now, we probably do a few million dollars business at least on a weekly basis, if not on a daily basis. So things have changed dramatically and uh, we have focused our proposition around really building value where we can, of course, customers can get extra budgets, they can consume those budgets, they get faster closures, they get quicker licensing models, we've got better geography and reach. So we've got several different capabilities with Google Marketplace that's allowed us to create this joint value. What really kicked in was very interesting, uh, was when the reseller program, Stephen and I, when we had a chat, uh, when he came on board taking this program, I said, Stephen, if you give me this capability, I will have 50% of my revenue coming within six months of that capability being there. And we probably, I undersold that to Stephen, we did about 70% uh, business. Because what we found really was, as customers want to consume marketplace and marketplace solutions, the reseller program, uh, security is a field where there's just not enough skill sets. We can throw in as many people we want. And we found that our customers still need many more, uh, many more people on the ground to implement security capabilities. That's where our value added resellers played a, a role. They had to become part of the commercial transaction. So Movement Steven unblocked that uh, for Google Cloud Marketplace. It really helped to accelerate our opportunity. Steven, the, the, the ability to accelerate initiatives for uh, projects is huge. I mean, this is the this is the agility aspect of marketplace translates into faster go to market for Palo Alto networks, but also gets customers the end customer set up with you know fast action in terms of looking at this this new market we're in, especially where the demand is so high and the and the activity is so high, especially in security. Yeah, hundred percent. And just to double down on some of the things Muni said, like. Palo Alto pushes us hard to shape our products and make them better. And as he mentioned, he and I had a conversation, I don't know, maybe it was 12, 15 months ago, something like that. And he said, Stephen, X percent of my business, it's a very large percentage, maybe he'll share it, goes through the channel and we, we rely on resellers to grow. Uh, and, and of course, on the other end of that, customers yeah. often want to buy their security solutions through a reseller because it's being packaged with lots of other things. Um, and maybe oftentimes they're managing a SOC for on behalf of a customer or something. And, you know, that's that's one of the many places where Palo Alto has pushed our product portfolio quite hard. So, so you know, of course, I took that feedback very seriously. And, you know, we went off and, and implemented those capabilities. And as Munish said, we, we launched them together in Q1. They were a, a beta tester much even before that doing several transactions. And it's become a meaningful uh, part of our business. And and like he said, we want to meet customers where they are. This is a way that customers want to buy. It's now an essential part of our marketplace. And, you know, I, we really have 
Palo Alto to thank, as with many other product innovations we've done to really push us to do the next right thing for our customers and, and, and make a more comprehensive set of solutions for customers. Monish, talk about the growth piece you mentioned, obviously go to market faster. Can you explain and how you guys had been um, so successful? Has it been um, your ability to go faster, um, customize, integration? What has been the key factor that you're enabling your channel? I mean, the ecosystem opportunity is huge. I see that. What has been some of the key to the success that marketplace? I mean, he unblocked you. Okay, you're great, you're getting revenue. What were the keys to success? Yeah, so at the, at the most simplistic level or the basic level was accessing budgets, extra budgets. That was that was there. But then as we started developing a lot more integrations into the marketplace, what we found is we could close deals faster. We could close larger deals because customer wanted to look at a five-year license. They could act and they only had budgets for three years. So they would use the Google marketplace and the Google commits to get us a larger deal. And uh, quite uh, quite openly, we've, we've seen over a period of four to five years, I would say between 16 to 22% uh, increase in our transactions just because we were in Google marketplace. And uh, that's because just customers could close them faster, larger deals, more licensing, and uh, they could leverage that bu common budget and commercial capabilities. And that's really uh, formed the cornerstone, but then we did not stop there. And fortunately we did not, we started with joint integration solutions. So we started to create a whole new set of value propositions around the Google marketplace. Munish, and I'd love to get Steven to comment as well. You know, one of the key to successes we're seeing in this marketplace uh, today and in Google Cloud Marketplaces specifically, um, is the relationship with the customer goes from transactional to holistic. It's one thing, right? It's a lot of things going on there. Product integrations and technology innovation is front and center because the efficiencies you're getting while maintaining the, the posture, security posture in your case for your customers, critical, right? So you need to have that going at the same time, that flywheel. Integrations also is key to the product success in your platform, Manish. How has the marketplace done that? I know you had a lot of integrations. Can you share um, your thoughts there and how you were successful on the integration side? Because that is a really important part of this new world we're living in. Yeah, and uh, when Steven and I catching up a week back, he, we had 75 integrations. This morning we have 76, and that's the story of where we want to take this to. And these integrations basically ensure that customers as they're building applications on cloud or they're accessing different cloud applications, or they're leveraging the Google network capability to transition applications and uh, build uh, modern, new modern applications with AI. Integrations become important because the customers don't want to become system integrators themselves. They want to go into a Google Cloud console, they want to configure a capability, they want to enable security on top of that, bringing in the Palo Alto technology, which they might buy from Palo Alto, through a reseller, through marketplace, they can buy through any channel, but they want to enable those solutions and then be able to deliver on the business outcomes in a secure manner. So that's where we've invested a lot of effort on. And what we are trying to get to is the closer we get to integration, so the customer can, uh, our goal really, that vision is that you go into Google uh, Cloud Console, configure a capability, a compute engine, an AI infrastructure engine, then you press a button, you click, you download a follow to license, you buy through marketplace and off you go. Uh, frictionless, yeah. focusing on customer outcomes. And that's really where we're going. We're investing a lot into integrations to enable that frictionless deployment. And you're launching and you're launching stuff as well faster. I mean, I imagine with, with you just mentioned 75 integrations since a week at 76, next week will be 77. I mean, this is a, a agile rapid launching of new capabilities. Can you share a little bit of that? That because the secret sauce there on in your side. So it's the engineering teams, it's the technical teams who really work together. Of course, we focus on key outcomes the customer is trying to achieve. Let's take AI and security. Uh, that's that's the big investment area for both our organizations. And uh, when we started, we have multiple products there. And how would the customer consume? Customers deploying these AI models and AI applications, they want to secure them. How would all of these products fit into their journey of deploying Google Cloud applications. So now we have started to create, we have a roadmap of about 22 different integrations we want to have to ensure as customers are deploying these new AI capabilities to 
accelerate their productivity in their organizations, they should be able to do it in a secure manner. And so that investment, creating that roadmap, having the engineering teams really think through how that will be there, how it will be implemented, then how do you manage it, how do you maintain it, how do you support it, how do you make sure you can run proof of concept. So we thought through that whole value chain as we are thinking about these integrations. Steven, yeah, on your side, you have to deliver the goods on the integration, making sure I mean, they're putting you under a lot of pressure. As you mentioned earlier, the Marvels have a lot of capabilities. They're moving fast. Yeah, I mean, look, I'll just kind of double down. One, if I take a big step back, one of the things that attracted me to the cloud 15 years ago, um, you know, that was kind of my first foray into the public cloud, moving Dow Jones uh, and, and, and our data centers to the cloud and, and, and unlocking all the innovation that came with it. it. It was It was really the idea that software is never done and that we're going to have ephemeral compute instances and lots of these capabilities that are going to continue to evolve and come out that allows us to evolve our software stack and the things that we're building together very you know quickly. And if I think about kind of our partnership with Palo Alto, if anything, the, the number of integrations that we're doing is accelerating because we're never going to be done. We come out with new capabilities, they come out with new capabilities. As, as Manish mentioned, AI has become of strategic importance to both of our companies, but because it's of strategic importance to our customers. So our customers are saying, great, I want to build all these AI workloads, but I need a way to secure them that require new innovation and new thinking. And because we have a relationship where our roadmaps are open to one another and we're always thinking about what the next thing that we can do together, because we're never going to be done, those feedback loops are just that much tighter and they continue to, to, to execute faster. And um, and like I said, you know, they just push us to be um, uh, better and to deliver more value for customers faster. So I think that this, the rate at which those integrations happen is only going to increase. Yeah, I mean, marketplaces are great. Not only is it a good money maker opportunity, customization, people can build their build their solutions faster. Um, and, and obviously the technology integration makes that technical side of the product work great. Now let's talk about the combined solution um, for customers. Let's get into some of the value evidence uh, Munish, can you guys share, and Steven, share some some customers where the combination of Palo Alto Networks and Google Cloud are working uh, and, and how that plays out? Absolutely, I'll start with a couple of things that we did together and then, uh, so uh, as we look at these integrations, what we one of the things we realized is that we can have so many integrations that even our engineering folks forgot that we've created an integration. It's a real life story. Two weeks back, we were trying to solve a problem where a separate engineering team was trying to build a new integration for something we had done one year back. I mean, it's that's the speed. So what we have done is we've taken all these integrations and brought them together in place that customers are thinking about. They're modernizing their network. They're looking at infrastructure modernization. They're looking at multi-cloud applications, new cloud native applications. They're building autonomous SOC operations. So we put that together in customer motions and then bundled all these integrations so that customers could consume them in a more methodical manner. Otherwise it started becoming a set of features that we would never know we exist. So um, as we translated that to customers, we found that we could actually platformize our customers with the, from a security point of view. They committed big time into Google, they're committing big time into Palo Alto Networks, and these integrations are now helping them to consume this in a holistic manner. So we have a large European fashion brand, and uh, this was July, first week of July, and we were trying to look at getting an opportunity. The customers had to accelerate a new e-commerce uh, capability. Uh, uh, the fashion brand had to go through a new e-commerce capability. And they were going to try to buy some point products from uh, Palo Alto Network. So they came up with this whole option saying, hey, why don't I consume all these technology capabilities instead of buying them individually? Let me buy them as a complete platform. And they ran into budget problems. So mm -hmm. Steven stepped in, helped to work through the commits of the customer, ensure that the customer understands how they can leverage these commits. And we actually closed the deal in less than 30 days. And it was a multi-million dollar deal. And that happened with the concept that you created these integrations, you created these solutions, the customer needed to quickly accelerate the e-commerce deployment. We had a great relationship. Google stepped in, we created an opportunity. So several more opportunities where I want to pause here to have Steven talk through a couple of them. What, yeah, I mean, the, the only thing I would add is like, you know, as, as Munish said, it's been a journey and we've been building to this sort of level of not just technical integration, but 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 sales and account engagement, um, you know, for the last seven years or so. And 
in most cases, um, well, you know, me and my team are, are, are willing to unblock anything we can. E even the Palo Alto uh, account teams are, are often on a texting relationship with, with the Google account teams. Um, that's how kind of tightly integrated uh, we've become. And, and to me, that's one of the things that makes this such a winning relationship is, you know, Palo Alto invests deeply in training <clears throat> our customer engineers so they understand the technical nuances of Palo Alto versus other solutions and how a customer can set that up in their cloud environment. Um, and on our account teams are talking about the value and, and, you know, planning in some cases. In this particular case with the European retailer, I think it was a, a one where we had to seize the moment and work very quickly. But oftentimes we're, we're, we're working on accounts together for, for months or quarters uh, leading up to, uh, to design wins that we're, we're trying to help them with. So I, I think it's just, you know, the continued maturation of um, their value proposition, our value proposition, and then how we're sort of positioning and, and making sure our respective teams are, are, are aware of the better together story. Munish and Steven, congratulations on a great partnership. Um, love the marketplace. You know, I'm a big fan, Steven. I think it's efficient. Um, and the speed of innovation is awesome. Monish, uh, on Palo Alto, you guys are a leader. Um, again, we've been following you for a long time. In this new paradigm of the speed of innovation, the monetization strong, what are the use cases that jump out? You mentioned some of those customers. Um, how would you categorize some of the use cases where the action is? I mean, obviously there's all action and security right now as everything's going on. But is there specific things where you're moving fast? Uh, obviously everyone's replatforming, looking to build that next gen system for Gen AI, for instance, but what are some of the use case categorically do you see the activity in? Yeah, so there are three pillars uh, that we are seeing tremendous traction in. Uh, the, the most basic pillar is the network modernization pillar where customers have huge networks, people working offline remotely, now they're coming back to office, many organizations revamping their whole infrastructure. A large percentage of the IT budgets go into bandwidth and speeds and feeds and how you interconnect applications. Their world is becoming more complex. So what Google has is a phenomenal planet scale network. We have a planet scale security platform and together we help customers to simplify their operations, deploy large scale uh, networks along with security from Palo Alto networks. So there's a whole lot of integrations we've created and some unique solutions that we have for customers to consume. And uh, we are seeing a large uh, uh, FMCG company now, right now work together with Google and Palo Alto Networks to leverage some of this capability. That's one. The second is uh, the modernization of uh, applications, cloud applications. Most customers have on-prem, they have multiple cloud vendors they might be working with, and uh, they want to have a security capability that spans across all these different uh, different infrastructure points they have in their organization. So we have what we call as a Prisma Cloud uh, and uh, capability or secure platform that allows us to integrate into Google security cloud logs, pull all the security capability, their on-prem capability and provide a unified kind of a view. So that's the second area. The third area, which is really the, ex the most exciting area is all AI yeah. and uh, with probably over 200 AI projects that we have started to work together we are now looking at how to secure the whole life cycle of customer's journey and how they train their models, how they build AI applications, how they have LLM ops to ensure they're operating these AI applications. And we are putting together a full security architecture that the customers can start deploying uh, so that at least from a security standpoint, they're looking at AI as, as uh, with the combination of Google and Palo Alto networks as a unique proposition. So we're starting to build that huge pipeline there. We waited for the end to bring up the AI again. This is again, the opportunity, Stephen, AI is going to be a real growth trajectory. It's again, just another application. So application security is a big part of the replatformization. Munish, comments on what you're doing in AI and Stephen, this AI wave is going to be another application um, that's going to be proliferating in all aspects of up and down the stack. Absolutely. Yeah, I think, I, I think uh, look, uh, I talk to lots of customers and every single customer is pursuing some sort of AI strategy, but the, you know, so, so the, the get POC is going really quickly and, and start to see the value, but, but in, as soon as they have something that they feel they want to deploy to production, of course, the first question is how do we, we make sure that we do this in a secure and governed manner 
for our data and our intellectual property isn't leaking into, you know, uh, consumer grade models or, or elsewhere or that people can't, you know, get at other parts of our data and inferences or that it's not creating a kind of threat vector somewhere else. And I think but, but Palo Alto has, has been very, very quick, obviously, to, to see this trend and is um, uh, evolving all of their products to make sure that they continue to, to give customers the capability where they don't have to trade off the speed of which they want to innovate with the, the, the security and governance that they need to do that responsibly. So I think this is going to continue to, to, to change the way we do just about everything in the industry and making sure that we have the best choice for customers with Palo Alto to secure those workloads is, is, is paramount for us to be successful. Winnie, I'll give you the final word. AI, your plans, what's going on? Give us a taste of what's coming down the pike. What do you got going on now with AI and where is it going? So apart from working across 200 customers, having 20 plus integrations that we are planning to, so that customers can deploy their AI applications more securely. I think uh, the uh, the real uh, en energy would come in when customers start getting their business outcomes in a secure manner, getting to drive their business outcomes in a secure manner. And uh, for, us, uh, for us, that's really our mission, platformize security in AI. And if we can do that properly, we can actually create drive productivity, we can ensure customers are securely using AI and driving bottom line and top line for their own companies. And that'll be really the proof of the pudding for us. Yeah, get those, get that benefit and maintain that security posture and, and be completely secure, that's the goal. Manish, thank you so much, Stephen, as always, great to have you on. I love this series, the Marvel series. Thanks for coming on, appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having us, John. Okay, this is the Marvel's, Google Cloud's Marvel series. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. Thanks for watching.